Welcome to the first beat of 2015. It's a big year for Braidwood. This year, our hometown celebrates its sesquicentennial, a word that has given me fits in past videos. It simply means Braidwood is 150 years old. I'm here at the Historical Museum with Dee DeGro, president of both the Historical Society and the Sesquicentennial Commission. Hi Dee, thanks for joining us. Hi. So the first question I have for you is, you are president of both the Commission and the Historical Society. Can you give us, kind of um, differentiate the two for us? Well, sure. The Braidwood Historical Society, we're in charge of the museum and um, do everything for the museum. When the sesquicentennial was coming up, we got a group together, and no one else would accept the position. So by default, I guess, I'm also president of the sesquicentennial commission. Fantastic. Okay, I know there's a ton of events upcoming throughout the year. Um, March is Vegas night, and what else do you have in store for us throughout the year? Well, in March, yes, we have the Vegas night. Um, it's We're calling it the Vegas-style evening. It'll be held at Fossil Ridge Public Library, and it is a fundraiser for the sesquicentennial. Um, with those funds, we will be buying souvenirs to sell. Um, we are also paying for a book that we're publishing, and um, that'll help us make payments on that book to order books and then of course we'll make a little more money when we sell those books but we also are doing a time capsule which will be really fun to fill it's going to be a huge size it's um oh probably six feet long by three feet wide um and we will be burying it somewhere around the park the location hasn't been determined and that capsule will include uh, copies of current 2015 items that we have. Um, it's going to have information about the schools and the organizations and, of course, a copy of the new book that we're printing. Um, something from the schools uh, by the children, I mean, maybe each class. That hasn't been determined yet. Um, maybe each organization will want to give us something like their hat or their pins or a, a vest or something of that sort. We'll put a copy of the Centennial book from 50 years ago and a copy of the Braidwood story that was written in 1957 and just whatever other objects we can put in there and it will be very well sealed and be put right in the ground after it's sealed and we're going to I don't know what we're going to do to put a, a plaque around it or near it to tell people what's what's buried there and we're hoping to let all of the fourth and fifth graders in Braidwood know that it's their job in 50 years to remember to dig up that time capsule. So um, they'll be told about all of that in the future, but that is to be in July, likely during Summerfest at some point. Uh, time and location has not been uh, confirmed as yet, but it'll be fun. All kinds of exciting events. Okay, so you're the president of the Historical Society, so clearly you already know quite a bit about the history of Braidwood. But I'm sure from the Sesquicentennial Commission, you've learned even more. So I want to know what the most exciting, coolest fact that you've learned since the research has started. Oh, gosh, the exciting, coolest fact. Um, I guess it's really, I've always known there had been a, rail, a railroad um, racetrack here in Braidwood uh, from years ago. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, 1880 something to 1915, I believe, is when it closed, and it was extremely popular. Rumor has it that the Will County Fairgrounds were at that location as well. I uh, haven't been able to confirm that with Will County as yet, but it's a good story. Um, the horses ran there up until they closed in 1915, and it's still being used for horses, although the, the current owner uh, passed away and his wife no longer cares for horses, so there really aren't horses out there right now. But when he bought that property in the 70s, um, people told him where the original racetrack was located. Oh, it was, it, I think it's so cool. 
they, he said, well, I want to find it. And they helped him locate the original track that was placed there in the 1880s. And he refurbished it, and it's used to this day. So it was like a Braidwood archaeological dig almost, <laughs> digging up our past. Really cool. Yeah. Okay, so this is a segment that I've done a couple times, and I absolutely love to do it. It's just rapid-fire questions, and we get to find out how great your mind works. Oh, I'm old. <laughs> you forgot that. I'm young, and I have to have notes in front of me. <laughs> okay, so are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Sure. What is the most important hor- historical figure in Braidwood? The most important historical figure? I don't know. Um, the first person comes to my mind is the gentleman whose picture is up here on the wall behind me, and that happens to be my grandfather. That's M.J. Dona, and he originated many of the organizations here, um, many of them. Uh, helped start the Braidwood Recreation Club, was the first president. Um, he wrote the Braidwood Story book in 1957 that so many people rely on for information. Um, he helped start the Knights of Columbus, uh, the Illinois Foresters of America. Uh, I just can't even think of them all right now. But, yeah, I have to say, M.J. Dona. Nice. Your family. And you're carrying on that tradition. Okay. Your favorite upcoming sesquicentennial event? Oh, gosh. I'm excited about the casino night that we're going to have in March. That's March 28th. I'm excited about that one, too. I'll definitely be there. Fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> okay. The best thing about Braidwood? Oh, gosh. I, I think I'd have to say the people and their um, their interest and ability to keep Braidwood good and people happy and help the community. It's wonderful. I definitely agree on that one. The worst thing about Braidwood? Oh, probably all of the... <laughs> all of the talk that people have when they don't have facts. I, I just don't like to hear people making comments when they don't have the real facts. And I don't know how to get it, but it's not by yapping your mouth about it. There's a lot of facts in this building. Oh, that's true. <laughs> All right. Your favorite display in the museum? Oh, my favorite display has been, right th- this year, has been the uh, veterans display that we've had. We had it all from May, June, and July during the summer, and it was just really cool to see people come in and see what we have. Many of the uh, artifacts were on loan, um, but they'll be back. We're going to do it again in May of this year um, just to have special things. But we do have a lot of photos of people from Braidwood who left for the service from Braidwood. Now, there's tons of recreation around this area, so your preference, water or woods? Ooh, uh, 30 years ago, I'd have said water, maybe even 40. Uh, However, I love walking in the woods. All right, and Tully Monster or Trilobite? Got to go for the Tully Monster. (laughs) That, That is just a cool thing that the only area in the whole world that it's ever been found is right here in the Mazonia area, which includes Braidwood, but others as well. But the Tully Monster, definitely. Okay, that was pretty rapid fire. Yeah. Your brain's working pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, so we should tell everyone contact information for the museum and the sesquicentennial if they want to get involved or if they want any more information. Yes, uh, you can call me, and my home number is 815-458-6891. So give me a call. I'll help you out or ask anybody on the commission. And there's a website. There's uh, braidwoodhistorical.org. Is that braidwoodhistoricalsociety.org? Correct. Okay. And then you could call City Hall as well, and that's 458-2333, and we can guide you to any information you might need as well. Thanks so much for playing along, Dee. Yeah. <laughs> Braidwood is a great place to live and play. More activities are added each year. When tragedy strikes, our citizens rally around each other, and many people are hard at work behind the scenes to make sure that these positive trends continue. Do your part by attending these events and supporting local business. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.